Following your initial patient assessment and control of any immediate life threats, you should obtain a baseline set of vital signs, which include pulse, respirations, skin color, temperature and condition, pupil size and reactivity, and blood pressure. The baseline set of vitals gives you a beginning place from which to make treatment decisions. As you retake vital signs, you will compare the readings to your previous findings. This is called serial vital signs. Serial vital sign assessment allows you to note trends in the patient's condition, such as a declining blood pressure or increasing respiratory rate. When measuring blood pressure, you will use a blood pressure cuff and a gauge called a sphygmomanometer. You can collect readings by auscultating or listening to the characteristic clicking or thumping sounds with a stethoscope. Or when the environment is too loud or the corticoff sounds too soft, you can palpate the blood pressure, which means to feel the radial or brachial pulse with your fingertips while using the BP cuff. To report blood pressure readings, use a blood pressure fraction. The top or first number reported is the systolic blood pressure. This is the pressure created when the heart contracts and forces blood into the arteries. The bottom or second number is the diastolic blood pressure. It measures the pressure remaining in the arteries when the left ventricle releases and refills, or the residual pressure in the system. A normal blood pressure for the average adult is around 120 over 80. Hypertension is defined as consistent readings with a systolic blood pressure over 140. Low blood pressure, or hypotension, is usually considered a systolic blood pressure below 90 millimeters of mercury. Begin the blood pressure measurement by removing or rolling clothing to expose the bare skin of the arm. Be sure that the sleeves, when rolled, do not occlude the arteries of the arm preventing blood flow. If the shirt is that tight, remove the arm from the sleeve. Select the appropriate size BP cuff. The cuff should measure two-thirds of the length of the upper arm, from elbow to shoulder. Additionally, it should be long enough to fasten the Velcro securely when the cuff is placed circumferentially around the arm. Place the cuff on the bare arm, following the illustration on the cuff for placement over the artery. With your fingertips, locate the brachial pulse on the medial upper arm near the antecubital fossa, or crease of the elbow. Place the diaphragm or bell of the stethoscope over this pulse point. With the bulb valve closed, inflate the cuff until the pulse is no longer heard or felt. Using the stethoscope, listen for the sound of the pulse returning as the pressure in the cuff is slowly released. Note the number on the cuff's gauge as soon as you hear the first pulse beat. This is the systolic pressure, the top number of the BP fraction. Continue to deflate the cuff, this time listening for the point at which the beats fade. Again, note the number indicated on the gauge. This is the diastolic blood pressure, the BP fraction's bottom number. Since you now have both your diastolic and systolic measurements, let the cuff deflate rapidly. Record the measurements and the time. Blood pressure is recorded in even numbers. As already mentioned, you may find yourself in a situation where it is impossible to hear an auscultated blood pressure due to external noises on scene or in the back of a moving ambulance. In such cases, an estimated systolic blood pressure can be obtained by palpation. Since the palpated blood pressures are usually lower than actual blood pressures, an auscultated blood pressure should be taken as soon as possible. The steps for palpating blood pressure are basically the same as used for auscultation. The obvious difference is that you do not rely on a stethoscope to hear the presence or absence of corticoff sounds. Begin by palpating for the radial pulse. Inflate the cuff until the radial pulse disappears. Then slowly release air from the cuff until the pulse reappears. At that point, check the gauge for the systolic blood pressure. Report your findings as the systolic blood pressure over P for palpation, as well as the time of the reading.